Well, my name is Deirdre Conway. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist, so our specialty is to help couples struggling with infertility, and my practice is at the Utah Fertility Center, and we provide comprehensive fertility treatment up to and including full in vitro fertilization. I think one of the really important things to remember that a lot of people don't realize, because IVF is typically something that's popular to talk about, the majority of couples that we see actually don't need to do in vitro fertilization. So in our center, about three quarters of the patients we see actually can get pregnant with something much less aggressive and also much less expensive than in vitro fertilization. So that leaves really only, of course, a quarter of patients that need to do IVF for various reasons. Some of the most common things that we'll see are maybe people that have been through less aggressive treatments and maybe it hasn't worked and so we use IVF as kind of like a backup plan or sometimes patients that have more severe mal factor issues. So that means we've done a semen analysis and maybe the count's really low or the quality of the sperm's really low. IVF is a really good way to get around that. And then the other most common thing that we see is tubal factor issues. So for various reasons, the female partner's fallopian tubes are blocked, maybe from endometriosis, prior surgery, pelvic infections, um, and that's a great way to get around that problem as well. So the process typically starts with a really thorough consultation with a doctor. So we sit down, we do a really, really careful history of both partners, male and female. We go through, you know, try and determine what the reason is for infertility and review all their prior treatment thus far. So that way when we come up with a game plan, it's really individualized for each individual couple so that, you know, so they do when they go through the process have the best chance of success. And then the next step is meeting with the IVF nurse coordinator. And so what that means is they sit down and kind of map out exactly what's going to happen from start to finish for that roughly six week period of time when they're going through the process of IVF. And I think that's really helpful for the patients going through so they can really conceptualize what to expect from the process, you know, and get into like the details of, of that. And then the next step is really starting the treatment. So that involves hormones in the form of injectable medications, which I think for a lot of people sound scary, but there are really great resources and we do a really good job of teaching people. So even people that are really nervous about injecting needles, um, they get through the process really well. So that takes about 10 days. At the very end of that, they undergo an egg retrieval and that's the only part you go under anesthesia for. Um, I call it mini anesthesia because you're asleep, you don't feel anything, but you wake up really quickly afterwards and go home about 45 minutes later. That same day we fertilize the eggs, and then now we actually grow embryos for a full five days in the lab, and that allows us to really pick out the very best embryo or embryos to transfer back to the uterus. Last but not least is the embryo transfer, which is a very brief process with really minimal discomfort that's actually really exciting, I think, for most couples because it's the last step in the process. So I, I would say that it seems like it's somewhat flexible, I think, in part because there's so much media and press about triplets and octuplets and, and things, but the reality is that it's actually fairly algorithmic and standardized, and we do have a guiding body called the American Society for Reproductive Medicine that gives us general guidelines on what's a safe number to transfer, and the biggest determining factors are the age of the female partner and the quality of the embryos. And so based on that, you know, I would say in, in couples where the female partner is 35 and under, we're typically only going to transfer somewhere between one and two embryos. Because although, of course, our goal is to give every couple the very best chance of getting pregnant, I think it's also important to remember that our goal is also to think about the bigger picture and we want everybody to have the very best chance of having a healthy baby, which is honestly a singleton pregnancy. Success rates with from one center to another actually vary quite drastically. I think in large part due to the quality of the embryology lab, which is something that a lot of people don't necessarily think about. The national average, for instance, for couples where the female partner is 35 and under is about 45% chance of an ongoing pregnancy per cycle. In our center, the success rates for that same age group are 65% compared to 45%, so well above the national average.
So if you're paying cash for in vitro fertilization, it will typically cost somewhere between ten and $15,000, depending on the protocol and the medications. We do have really good discount programs for the, both the medications and the package cost of IVF, depending on patients' income levels. In terms of insurance coverage, unfortunately, here in the state of Utah, it often is not covered. I would say about 15% of our patients will have some insurance coverage for fertility treatment, but a lot of insurance carriers and employers do consider it an elective procedure so they don't choose to cover it. The process of IVF is, I think, in, in any fertility treatment and infertility in general can be really stressful. So my goal and our goal is really to make the process as accessible, affordable, and stress-free as we possibly can. So if you want to see us, it would be great to come in and give us a call or make an appointment. So if you're wondering or if you'd like to come see us, we, we would love to help you through the process.